And these two papers, they looked at that very carefully. They actually did a lot of screening, and the mothers said that they did not change their cooking habits for their family. That, one of those is a Canadian study from Picard Marceau. They did not change their overall cooking habits substantially between before surgery and after surgery. They still continue to cook the same. Uh, of course, again, maybe a slight, I mean, a subtle change in terms of just dietary habits. If you look at the reference you had to the Europeans, their eating style is different. Okay, less fast foods, slower meals, better prepared, more fresh foods. Um, so I think that there may be an influence to, they did not see a breakout in terms of uh, ethnicity uh, with the Canadian study, and that's why I have to go back and ask Dr. Morso about that. Okay. It also depends what kind of surgery you're doing because there's more than one type of weight loss surgery. So, and it also depends on the surgeon, if I may say so, because um, a good surgeon will make sure that the patient has had really good counseling prior to surgery and knows what they're getting into and has had a good psychological so that that patient is well prepared and knows what they need to do and many times has, ha has already made changes prior to getting their surgery. Some patients feel like, man, I want to just eat whatever I want right now because then I'm going to have to change. And that's not a good way to approach surgery. That's why I asked the question about Right. And then if they're having lap band surgery, then they have to change ahead of time. And in fact, you have to go on a modified liquid diet for two weeks prior to the surgery just to shrink the liver enough to get it out of the way because you're doing laparoscopic surgery. And that liver, especially if you've got fatty liver disease, is going to be in the way of the surgery. So, um, but the best surgeon will have um, a lot of things done ahead of time. That person's already off soda pop, they're already um, eating a healthy diet, and they're already walking every day if, they're, if they can. And um, they've, they've already been psychologically prepared. Many people, even after they've lost 100 pounds and maybe close to their ideal weight or whatever, feel very obese. It takes a long time for the psychological to come up to the physical. And there can be a lot of problems with body image after surgery, but you may have more to say on that subject. Well, and I guess starting from just the, the whole spectrum with this, Patients contact us and want to consider having surgery. We want to get as good a feel for them. So we have, for example, several questionnaires. We do a self-image assessment. You find out, does this person have a very negative self-image? You know, how do they feel about themselves? Somebody pays them a compliment, do they believe them? Never, okay? When they eat something bad, they know that it's labeled as a bad food, how they feel about themselves, they hate themselves. I mean, they feel, so you start to inquire about issues like this. You ask about past psychological trauma. Patients that have grown up with either physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, growing up in an alcoholic household, okay? There are things that you have to address. Patients with history of depression, you can do the back depression inventory, okay? So you start to ask different things to try and get a feel for what the patient has experienced. Some of these you only pick up doing a one-on-one -on -one interview as you start to ask. Um, my older patients will tell the patients coming in, he's gonna get you in the office one-on-one -on -one there's some Kleenex in there. Be careful, okay? Because you're asking patients to actually focus and do some introspection and ask themselves some very hard questions. Those are things that you have to implement as part of your process. Uh, it's not a quick fix. It's not a miracle cure. And you have to emphasize the lifestyle change, behavior modification, and long-term follow-up, okay? That's very key. I mean, patients are gonna be successful for those that, that follow-up, that come back for their follow-up, and actually adhere to a good uh, meal plan and exercise plan. 